Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. Today I wanted to come out and share a couple things with you. Uh, a few dreams, one which is extremely concerning and then the other one uh, is encouraging. And uh, I just wanted to end with some scriptures that assure us that even in all these dark times, folks, everything we're seeing that's going wrong seemingly uh, is all a part of the Father's plan to bring in the millennial reign of Christ. He's got this, and I want to show some scriptures to you that will encourage you uh, that you don't need to be fearful. We just we are just waiting for the Lord to to have His way. We are waiting for the Father to have His way. All right. First thing was a dream I was given two nights ago, and this is concerning AI and the children, and it's extremely disturbing. Uh, in this dream, it was like I was being shown a video warning and I was watching almost like a commercial in this warning. The narrator was explaining what was going on in some of these, it seemed like elite households that they were hiring. It was like an AI robot, but it was also part human. It looked more human than it did uh, like a robot. But anyway, in this one household, there was a female and a male AI servant and they were hired to take care of the children in this household while the parents were at work or whatever. And so I watched as the, there was like a 14 year old girl in the household. She had, she was facing the wall and I watched as the male AI robot walked up to her and, and grabbed her behind. And it had this sinister mischievous look on its face. Well, when the girl turned around, she was, pregnant very pregnant and then she was like positioning herself to have sex with this ai robot thing and when i woke up from that dream immediately i remembered uh, i don't know if you heard about it it was probably like 10 years ago uh, that one actor who they call the rock dwayne johnson was on saturday night live and they were doing a clip and in this skit they all had to come up with some type of a uh, invention and Dwayne Johnson invented a child raping robot and I'm not even kidding you can go look it up and even from what I had heard the the audience of Saturday Night Live was appalled but this just tells us this has been in the works for a long time but in my dream the narrator said this is going on right now this is going on right now so the thing with that is it's really not all that far-fetched. If you go to Daniel chapter 2, verse 43, okay, this is what it says. And in that you saw the iron mixed with common clay, they will combine with one another in the seed of men. The iron and the clay, iron symbolizing robotics, uh, some type of technology, and that would be combined with humans. So this is... A lot like what I had talked about uh, before with this transhumanism stuff that's going on where you've got humans and, and they're like being merged with some type of mechanical robotic features and, and some of them are for super soldier purposes. But in this case, uh, they are literally targeting the children, you know, the young girls to mingle their seed and create more of their kind. I know it's extremely disturbing, but from what I was shown, it's happening right now. So something to make as a matter of prayer, but folks, it just speaks to where we're at in these end times. We are, we are in the days of Noah, okay? Uh, now the next dream was a dream I was given last night, and this is an encouraging dream. And in the dream, I believe it was John Paul Jackson who was speaking to me, he was prophesying. And he was telling me about the white horse, okay, the white horse that, that Revelation speaks of. And in the dream, he was explaining that the white horse, which we know is symbolic of Antichrist, when Antichrist comes on the scene, uh, he was saying that that horse's name is Vanish. The horse's name is Vanish. So in other words, whenever the, the Antichrist comes on the scene, the church will vanish. That will be the time of the rapture. And if you look up the word vanish, it, it's literally defined as to disappear suddenly and completely. So in the dream, I was trying to share this information with my sister, Michelle, who symbolizes the church most of the time in my dreams. 
And when I say the church, I mean the overall church. I'm not talking about like a small individual fellowship. I know there are some small fellowships where people are walking with the Lord, that people are growing. Uh, I'm talking in general, like the overall church worldwide, which for the most part is apostate. And uh, so that's what I believe my sister in those dreams is symbolizing. And anyway, she, when I was trying to tell her and my brother, she just kept shutting me down. She would not allow me to share what John Paul had said about this uh, this horse being named to vanish the white horse and, and the rapture Bible prophecy. She didn't want to hear anything about it. I think that speaks to a lot of people in the structured church, organized religion, the overall church again. And they don't want to hear about Jesus coming back. A lot of people do not want to hear about that. And, and for those of us waiting on him, it's hard for us to conceive of that and, and imagine that somebody wouldn't want Jesus to come back, but some people are just really comfortable in their lives, in this world. They've really grown attached to the things of this world, and they don't want to hear about uh, about the return of Christ. And I've had people who've made some comments concerning the pre-tribulation rapture on my last video, and I'm not going to go into it like a full-blown teaching on the pre-trib rapture, but I want to go over a few scriptures that testify to the pre-tribulation rapture. The Bible tells us that a credible testimony is established by two or three witnesses. And I'm just going to share four scriptures that point to the rapture being pre-tribulation. And the first one is found in Revelation 3.10. And this is the letter uh, to the, the angel of the church of Philadelphia. And this is what Jesus says. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. Okay, so Jesus is speaking of this hour of trial that's going to hit the whole world. We know that's the tribulation. It is going to be worldwide. And this one small group uh, is given this promise that they are going to be spared from this, okay? And uh, it's not all seven churches. Not all seven churches were given this promise. So this is, speaks to a remnant that is going to be spared this hour of trial, which is Jacob's trouble. And in Luke 21, 36, Jesus said, Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all the things, all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Right here, Jesus is not using any veiled language he's speaking of the escape okay and standing before the son of man the beam of seat judgment so this is very clear that we will escape the wrath of god not the wrath of man many people say the church has to go through cleansing well church that's what the blood of christ did for us we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus, not by suffering. Now, yes, we all go through a degree of suffering. The church has been being persecuted for 2,000 years, okay? Millions have given their lives for their faith in Jesus. Uh, but Paul makes it clear in 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Now that's just three scriptures and there's many more. And there's one that's a little controversial, but I'm going to share it anyway because this one is, if you understand it in context, it is very clear that the church will not be here the moment the Antichrist comes on the scene. Just like John Paul was saying, that white horse's name being vanished indicates that the church will be removed. The church will vanish the moment the white horse comes on the scene, the moment the Antichrist is revealed. And that's exactly what Paul said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I'm just going to read verses 1 through 7 to give you the context of this scripture. And if you understand the context, then the message is very clear what Paul is communicating. Now we request you, brethren, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him. Now see, he's saying our gathering together to him. This is speaking of the harpazo. This is the rapture of the church, the time when we as the church will be taken off of the earth and meet the Lord in the clouds, as Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 53. On to verse 2, that you not be quickly shaken from your composure or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter as if from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. So Paul's trying to calm their fears here. It's really important to understand the context. 
let no one in any way deceive you for it will not come okay meaning the tribulation unless the now right here the scripture should read departure and up until the 1500s every bible translated that departure that was changed in the 1500s but so i'm right going to read it as departure it will not come unless the departure comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed the son of destruction and then down into verse 7 for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way now that would be the holy spirit in the church not the holy spirit itself the holy spirit will always be on this earth to some degree but in the way holy spirit is in the church the Holy Spirit and the church will be removed then the lawless one will be revealed that the Holy Spirit in the church has to be removed because we are the restraining force church that's holding back the darkness that's holding back uh, the the coming of the Antichrist onto the scene okay in full force now the thing I really wanted to emphasize is the reality of the tribulation and the purpose of it many people uh fear about the tribulation and and that jacob's trouble is a time for satan to have his way on this earth and what i want to point out to you is that the tribulation just like any other time when god judged the earth is under his control the the only thing is in this type of uh in this setting god is going to use evil to destroy the wicked which is actually a scripture from psalm 34 21 and this is not the first time he has done that if you go to exodus chapter 14 verse 4 okay this is during the time when the israelites were trying to escape egypt and uh at this point pharaoh begins to pursue them now at this point it could seem hopeless these people could feel like oh my goodness what chance do we have pharaoh is now in pursuit of us but here's what the bible tells us about that in verse 4 of chapter 14 of exodus thus i will harden pharaoh's heart and he will chase after them and i will be honored through pharaoh and all his army and the egyptians will know that i am the lord and they did so god moved upon pharaoh a man who was already evil and he moved upon him to do what God wanted him to do to in order to bring glory to God and to show Egypt who he is that he is in control and the same thing is going to happen during the tribulation and if you go to Revelation chapter 17 and read verses 16 through 17 this gives you one clear statement of how God is going to be in control during this time and this is how it reads and the ten horns which you saw and the beast these will hate the harlot okay this is like the one world church and uh, and will make her desolate and naked and will eat her flesh and will burn her up with fire for god has put it in their hearts to execute his purpose you get that to execute his purpose see he's using evil to destroy the wicked as psalm 34 21 tells us by having a common purpose and by giving their ki their kingdom to the beast until the words of god will be fulfilled so all of this evil that is coming on the earth the purpose of it is to destroy the wicked it is not to cause fear in the hearts of god's people uh, god is in control the enemy is always playing into the hands of the father he is always just being used as an instrument for God's higher purposes. Okay, so I hope that brings a little comfort to your heart, just remembering always that God is in control. Uh, and as the evil seems to be rising up more and more, take comfort in knowing that this is all in God's control, that nothing's happening outside of his will. And church, we are going to be taken out before the wrath of God is poured out the the wrath of the lamb and the wrath of god are coming on this earth but the church will not be here for it the remnant church okay those who are who are faithful to god and, and remain in christ they will be taken out before the tribulation begins 
So I hope and pray that this encourages you, church. And as always, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.